It's eight against Duke, but the last win that Duke had in the series was right here two years ago in the ACC semifinal. Yeah, these games are always really, really tight. Uh, healthy respect from one another. And what I think is so interesting about this matchup, too, is you have two coaches in Mike Noonan and John Kerr that have been coaching against each other for the better part of 25 years, Quag. Not just in the ACC, but before. Oh, uh, here's Richmond. Nathan Richmond up ahead. Silla tried to find him. Well, as I was saying, John Kerr was at, at Harvard when Coach Noonan was at Brown, so they locked horns in the Ivy League for a while before both making their way to the ACC. It'll be a free kick. Some things to watch tonight. Duke again, 23 consecutive matches unbeaten. No losses, a few ties in there. But certainly, you've got a situation where Duke is riding high throughout the regular season. And quite frankly, uh, it's a team that has got to be feeling about as good as it can. He's got some good mojo built up over the first part of this season. Yeah, talking to Coach Kerr, you know, about his team, and he said, unlike the last couple of years, he's pretty set on his 11. He's, uh, he likes his team. He says they have a lot of belief. Tigers with possession early. Joseph Andema. Popmar Boy sends it forward, and now Duke with possession. Now Periano just looking to play him behind quickly to Ajago, or as he's referred to, on the campus of Duke, the Bear. We may see that. He's got a reputation or a celebration that has earned him that nickname. And Dama clears it. Up ahead, this is Silla. In the middle, goes down, sticks with it. Now Richmond. Uh, Richmond just looking for the little back hill for the overlapping Sean Smart. Low cross and headed away. Arthur Duquesne tried the little flick. Clemson will regroup at midfield. It's a Clemson team. Got some serious quick strike ability, no question about it. Yeah, they do, and it's a, it's a team I, that you never really feel like they're out of the game. Just last week against Notre Dame, they were down 2-0, rallied back to tie it up before halftime. They ultimately dropped that game on the road. But I found themselves at a deficit again with South Florida and clawed their way back and earned the the win there. Amir Daly sent it away for the throw. Duquesne gets it back. Keeps it in. Good defending that time. 23 in blue. Keenan Hot. Now Silla back for Clemson. Paris with the captain stripe. Here we go. In from Smart and batted away. Now Duke looked like they had a nice little counterattack going there, but Periano elects to slow it down and keep possession. Foot race. And Dama couldn't get it away. Ajago with some pressure. 
There's a look at John Kerr. 16th year as a Duke head coach, quarterfinal participant a year ago, and a guy with a long history with this Duke men's soccer program. Hey, they say you can never go home again, but it seems to work out all right for him. Winning a national championship in 1986 as a player there. Herman Award winner. Now he's feels he's fortunate enough to be at the helm, and I think the bonus is he's really enjoying coaching both of his sons on the team this year, Cameron and Drew. And Cameron in the starting lineup tonight. Certainly one of his critical pieces. One thing that's clear about Coach Kerr, they've really got a good thing going right now. They really struggled right around COVID. Just weren't winning as many games. They've become accustomed the last two years, 27, seven and five. That's a 756 win percentage. Yeah. And that's back to the standard of Duke soccer. Yeah, really, really turned it on. And their elite eight last year in the national tournament. Well, you don't go 23 unbeaten without doing something right. You got to do a thing or two correct. Yeah, and the impressive part about that is you're talking about that's a 23 game regular season unbeaten run and you play in the ACC. <laughs> so over the course of, of two seasons, to put that together is pretty impressive. Amir Daly shaking up. Jogging off the field. There's a look at Mike Noonan. And what he's done at Clemson, remarkable. National champions. In fact, the, the last team to beat those national champions was actually Duke in the ACC semifinal. We're going to talk about that a little bit. But two times an ACC tournament champion, looking for his 10th NCAA tournament appearance. You can say this about Mike Noonan. He is going to ring every ounce of potential out of his roster each and every year. Left foot strike is wide. That's off the boot of Ruben Masales. Yeah, for sure. You see a couple of ACC tournament titles there, and he's been in the final of a few more, but I think the, I think he's etched his name in Clemson history here by putting that third star on that crest with that national championship. And an offside flag up. So we got a bit too far forward. And that kind of playing a new role for him as a center forward tonight. He's usually either started in a wide area or or coming from midfield. It's like he's taking the role that is normally occupied by Mohamed Say. I'm interested to see Silla in that role. Well, the one thing he will bring you may not he may not be the, the target player that Mohamed Say is with his back to goal against a, a big center back, but Defenders will take a deep breath when he gets on the ball and sizes you up to run at you. Scooped up there by Endema. I think Ajato was trying to pick out Bjornsson in the box and just didn't shape it quite far away from Endema. What's interesting about this Duke back line, Qualk, is you're returning three starters there in that defensive back three. Your goalkeeper is new, but pretty good freshman there in Julian Eyestone. 6-6 six, six frame. Certainly a big target, no question. Blue Devils. Looking to press. That should be offside. It is. A Jago. About a half second early on that run, and now Clemson a chance to trigger it. Here's a look. Yeah, nice combination play and some intelligent movement there from Gael Joubert. Stepping at the last minute to put him in an offside position. A little bit sloppy there on the back line. And Bjornsson 
whistled for the foul. Yeah, there wasn't a lot in that. I think it was a little bit of a clumsy play, and not necessarily if I would have thought that was a foul. Popmar Boy sends it. See if Clemson can make something here. Taken away, given right back. Richmond, good defending, gets it back. Try to back foot for Smart. He gets it. Into the middle, deflected. How about the hustle there from Smart? Big shot, deflected. Sean Smart, you know, it's one of those situations where you want your outside back, outside midfielder in this 3-4-3 to come forward and contribute in the attack, but just look how quick he is. Looked like shoulder to shoulder. He may have gotten away with one there, huh? I don't think awesome. Cameron Aceto thought he was going to come that hard in there. No, I didn't think he, and he's deceptively quick. It's well done from Masalas. Is he going to get it back? Tiger's able to cut down the angle. Jago up ahead for Bjornsson. And Dayama gobbles it up. Clemson could tend to take its time at the moment. Smart. Plays it out. Masalis. Amran Aceto, too strong. That's nicely done. Nice redirect. Now Silla able to play it up the left side. Jibbe has it now on the left. Silla trips up. Alex Meinhard able to find him in a dangerous place. And just couldn't get the ball across to the face of the goal. Yeah, it looked like Guzman still was just pulling a little Cruyff cut there to keep it in play, but I think he slipped on that wet turf. Bjornsson turns it over. Left side, this is Duquesne. Nice ball. Cross from Richmond. Yeah, he's trying to pick out Brandon Parrish, but nice little combination play there from Duquesne and Richmond to, to get Richmond free on the flank. And Dama, plenty of space to deal with that. Popmar Boy sends it high away. Silla gets it back. Chance. I oh, thought he was going to rear back and nail it. Instead, he tried the extra touch and it was sent away. And that to me is what makes him such a special player. I think everyone in the, in the stadium thought he was pulling the trigger there, but he was obviously looking to play Parrish in with one more pass and nearly came off. Joubert back to Boy. Now back to Andema. Look one more time at Silla. Well, he almost got it through, didn't he? Yeah, he was just trying to thread the needle there to 
I think that's Brandon Parrish who was looking to play behind. Maybe that was Alex Meinhardt. Good footwork there. Chance to attack and just couldn't get connected. Now it's Frederick. Plays it out wide. Masalis. Bjornsson the touch. And here comes Clemson's counter. Nice sliding play by Hot. Definitely a feeling out process from these two squads early. They just kind of probing each other a little bit, trying to find some openings. Played through. This is Richmond. On the right, left foot. Smart to follow, has the angle. Played back and just taken away. Julian Eyestone delivers a save for Duke and keeps the Tigers scoreless. Yeah, but look at that. I'm Amir Daly's positioning here. He doesn't allow the backside runner to get inside of him. He gets enough of it to, to just steer it in Eyestone's direction. That is solid defending there. Daly, 5'8", senior from Elmont, New York. Earning his keep right there for sure. Paris will turn it. And play it back. Nice ball up the left side. Duquesne shot deflected and cleared. That's a good recovery from Cameron Kerr there to, to slow it down enough. We got a whistle. Who's going to get it? Are they going to get Duquesne here? I think he's going to have a word with him. Not sure if he's going to get a card here. Probably just tell him to settle down a little bit. Foul will go against Clemson. Got to think maybe a little frustration from Duquesne here. A little nudge. You just can't extend that forearm in that situation. Frederick was just looking to shepherd that ball out of bounds. Smart gives it off. Richmond. Tigers have had success down the right side here early. Richmond to Smart. Just deflected. That'll go out and be a throw. Yeah, I think the combination of the of Sean Smart and Nathan Richmond, just two very quick players. That's been problematic for Duke here early. Smart stays on side. Into the middle. Deflected it in. I think that's going to go in the, the books as an own goal there for Duke, but I think we just talked about how problematic Sean Smart's pace has been. Full credit to him for whipping that ball in there the way he did. I'm interested to see how he got back on side before making that run. We'll have a look here. Just a super job. Was that Kerr? Yeah, it looked it, like it, and that's unfortunate. That was five. Antino Lopez yeah, Antino. caught the cleat. It's always so dangerous when you're facing your own goal, defending when the ball is in a wide area. And 
those type of things can happen. Clemson played from behind its last time out. A thrilling come from behind victory at South Florida. Not doing that early today. Leading number eight, Duke. Bodies flying to get a piece of the ball in midfield. Well, Quark, we've talked about it. It's just that there's something a little bit different about a night game on a weekend here at Riggs when, when this field gets going and this team seems to feed off the crowd and the crowd feeds off the performance. So important for, for Duke here to stay focused and locked in. Maybe the best venue in the nation, and it gets even tougher when the Tigers get the lead as there's a foul. Yeah, I think I may agree with Lopez there. I don't know how much was in that. Luz Moncilla had a nice turn. We'll have to see. Yeah, he clips him a little bit, doesn't he? Just a hair. Already five fouls in the early going of this one. About 20 minutes in. See how Clemson decides to deal with this chance. Set piece. Parrish. I think that was Guy Gilbert winning that first ball, wasn't it? Just trying to knock it down for Clemson to be first to the second ball. Duke does well to get it cleared. Will be an easy, easy gather and throw in. Clemson has really established a pressure point in this game early. Brandon Parrish just looking to. Play Minard in behind. They're trying to sneak back there a little bit. Bjornsson looking to do something similar. Right foot deflected, and Dama scoops. Hot took a big swing. Yeah, it was a good, good block there. Not sure if that was Jabe on the block, but looks like he got dinged up a bit. Maybe hyper extended his knee when he blocked that. Joran Jabe talked about him in the open. Let's see what happened here. Maybe a little bit yet. Yeah. Not sure exactly what happened here. Hard to tell. I didn't know if it was the follow through. Not sure. A little hyper extension. Yeah, a little hyper. Landed a little weird. Yeah, tweaked it a little bit. Felt something. He appears to be okay. Silla. Back to Parrish. Excuse me, that's Richmond. Now Parrish has it. It's going to be play on advantage there. Center referee doing a good job of explaining the situation to Richmond. Gave you advantage, you retained possession. A little heavy for Meinhard that time. And again, not content to hold possession. They want to push, and they are. Parrish through, deflected. I 
I think Frederick got just enough of that to make it difficult for Parrish to get on the end of it. Excellent footwork by Lindegaard. Looks like we're going to see our first change here. First off the bench for the Tigers will be Elton Chafamba. Junior made 26 starts in his career. Fourth time coming off the bench this season. Brandon Parrish will take a seat. Talk about work rate. Parrish working his tail off out there in the midfield. Yeah, it looked, like, it looked like earlier he had he had felt something tweak in his groin or his hamstring. He was after a little run, he was reaching for something. So not sure if Coach Noonan just wants to get him checked out. Oh, a bit of a miss hit there by Frederick. Kept the Tigers in the play. Opportunity. Left footer deflected wide and a corner kick. Boy, a golden chance there for Chafamba right off the jump. Yeah, right as he comes on and you see he has options. But look at the ball from Minard here playing him in. And Richmond's right there just he tries to get it across to him. Richmond wanted it fed earlier. Now you can see a little frustration there from Richmond because he had a wide open goal in front of him. Yeah, he did. Silla gets it in and it's snagged out of the air. I mean, you have a, a goalkeeper of high stone stature, 6'6. Six, six. You're going to have to steer that service away from him. Meinhard fouled. Hot, a little too aggressive there. Uh, Kenny Hot. One more look at this. Yeah, just high pressure. Not wanting Meinhard to turn, but can't foul in that situation. And a goal kick. Oh, oh no, they're going to give a corner here. Yeah, Meinhard appealed for a corner. He, he got it. Had a convincing argument for the assistant referee. Really thought from everybody's body language that was going to be a goal kick, and yet Clemson now with an opportunity to go on the attack. Nathan Richmond. That yeah, looks like they could be cooking something up here, looking to play short with Jafamba and Silla around it. I think ultimately he's going to look to serve. Yep, sends it in and again, punched away. Yeah, I think Eyestone is going to command that area pretty well. Eyestone, true freshman from Dallas, he reclassified to 2023 as the top goalkeeper in his class. If that tells you anything. And he's done nothing but back that ranking up at the start of his college career. And Dama gobbles. Well, he's been big in the moments he needed to tonight. I think it was just unfortunate on the goal. It was. There's a look at the foul. 
Back the other way it goes. Right at the front, the misdirect goes wide. Redirect by Chafamba with nothing but grass around him. A look at the ball played in here from Meinhardt. Perfect. I think he had enough time to take a second touch, didn't he? He did. Almost a little too open. Too much free space in the box. Duke really has been unable to keep possession. Clemson has had the ball for the vast majority of the first 29 minutes of this first half. Yeah, I feel like the first the first five five to ten minutes, Duke was having some good spells. They were getting the ball into Ajanko's feet and into Bjornsson's feet, and they were holding the ball up and and doing some things. And really, since kind of that goal looks like it's uh, shaking their confidence a little bit. Which, it, as I said, it can be unnerving in a hostile venue. Like we said before, you know, Clemson's kind of had Duke's number the last seven years, but the most recent trip Duke made here to Historic Griggs Field, they won an ACC semifinal back in 2021. Of course, Clemson avenging that loss last year at the same stage of the conference tournament. It's been interesting. The road teams won three straight in this series. Blue Devils now looking to hold it for a little bit. Right on cue, as we talked about, they hadn't really held it for a while. They've had possession for at least a couple of minutes here. This is Frederick. Played into the middle for Hot. Now back. Duke will regroup. A good spell of possession here. Thompson just looking to, to stay compact. They're pick and choose their moments to go and try to get it. Comran Asito. Pretty good tactic here for Last maybe three minutes by Duke really make Clemson defend for a little bit because when Clemson, you know, for 20 minutes, they have really been in attack mode. You've almost made Clemson switch mentalities here a bit. Oh, my. Bjornsson goes down, ball across, and Dama aggressive and able to pick it off the foot of a Jago. Well, it looks like he got caught, kind of caught there in no man's land. Nice ball in from Bjornsson. He makes initially a little kick save to deny the cross, and he's quick to smother it. Well done from Andema. Certainly love the upside of Joseph Andema. He got two excellent goalkeepers in this game. Here's Duquesne fighting traffic. A little behind his target, Richmond. Oh, just as soon as we said you got to get a Jago and Bjornsson involved again. There they are, the two of them. Looking for Bjornsson there and just a little bit high. Since 
See a little bit of fatigue setting in and reinforcement. Some, you know, you see grabbing shorts and bending over at the waist. And you could tell a lot of guys have left it all out here in the first half. Jackson Robel, Isaiah Easley both in for Clemson. Bull Jorgensen, Drew Kerr in for his brother, Cameron. And you've got Jai Bean, Miguel Ramirez, both fresh legs in the game for Duke. A lot of reinforcements. A couple of Duke substitutions went off the far side behind the goal. And Referee's not going to restart the game until they make their way back to their bench. Just ran a few extra steps, no big deal. It'll be Duke's throw in now. Masalas. Lopez with it, right in the middle of the back line. Daly plays it back, and it'll be I Stone to hold it for a moment. Daly tripped up. Foul whistled there. Yeah, good change of pace from Daly, though. See him coming out of the back, just gets beyond easily. Draws the foul, it's an easy decision for the referee. Asito, now back to Lopez. And Duke kind of calming his game down just a little bit. Clemson with the early lead on the own goal from the Blue Devils. Nice ball work there by Periano. I think if you're Duke, you want Periano further up the field, getting on the ball, not, not taking the ball off of the back three. You want him operating between the, the Clemson midfield block and their back line. But that's just a a byproduct of him wanting to get on the ball. Nice defending by Potmar Boy. He hits the deck and now the ball goes wide. This is Fami Ibrahim cleared for the moment. A whistle. There's a bit of confusion here, I think. Yeah, I think that, I think it was a foul on Isaiah Easley. He looked like he was allowing to play on to see if an advantage would develop. He determined that advantage would not develop. You can see he's just a little late on the challenge here. Referee calls advantage. Duke eventually loses the ball, just brings it back. I think that's the right decision. That's well officiated there. 8.53 to play in the first half. It's like this is going to be either Periano or Macellus taking the free kick. Yeah, I think it's going to be Periano just whipping a ball in, shaped away from Andima. Behind that Clemson back line. It'll be Masalis. Just wide. Not sure they could have executed that much better except for the finish by Jai Bean. Yeah, that was a great ball in from Masalis, wasn't it? Look, Jai Bean stays on sides here. Finds himself alone. Wow. They want that one back. 
And Damon made that a tough angle, but still. Not able to put it on the frame. Jai Bean. Who just finished up with the Bermuda senior national team last week. Very good experience for him and right there. Could have been a bit of a welcome back with a nice goal. A little nudge from behind and a whistle. A little bit of join back and forth. You almost expect that when these teams get together. Yeah, I think that was Jorgensen there with just a little foul on Isaiah Easley. Easley does a good job earning this one. That was a, yeah, a little contact with Amir Daly. Jorgensen and Daly, and then I think Daly may have had words for him. Chafamba over there to potentially take the kick. It looks like Jackson Robles yep. over it as well. In the back off, it's going to be a Roble. And picked off. Absolute carnage in the penalty area there. A number of players go down. I Stone slings it out there quickly. Duke with a pretty good counterattack chance here, but Clemson, good speed getting back. That's one thing Clemson's got in spades. They can recover quickly. And now they'll try to maneuver to their own attacking end. Opportunity. Cross deflected. Couldn't tell. Was that James Kelly that made that run beyond? I believe so. Yes, it was. Now for a young man his size, yes, good pace, doesn't he? Sophomore 6-2 from Gastonia, North Carolina. You can tell who's got the fresh legs, able to make that run. Yeah, absolutely, Quark. Duke's got a few candidates here, too. It's it's not terribly hot, but still pretty high humidity. Daly, good one-on-one -on -one defending on him that time by Easley. Jorgensen tried to shove it left. Throw in on the sideline. This is Kelly. Has it taken away. Jorgensen. Look at the recovery speed of Sean Smart just so quick. Oh, that's not a bad look. That that's just shaped a little bit more towards the, the sideline. I think Easley can get on that. Eystone was aware, though. Four thirty five left before halftime. One nil game. Something to note about Duke. They've scored 15 goals this year. 13 have come after halftime. So if you're Clemson, this next four minutes could be really important to make sure this isn't just a one goal lead. Well, we, last game we called, we talked about how important it is to remain focused. You're, you're really fatigued here at the end of the 45. You've got to be mentally sharp and, and physically ready. We saw Florida State pounce on, tie the game 2-2 here in the women's match. Here comes Kelly. Going to get to keep it. Redirect. That was a little frenetic in there, but a lot of guys had a chance to put a good touch on the ball. Yeah, it nearly fell. Very nicely for Jackson Robel, too, didn't it? 
Good run here on the other side. This is Bean. Bean's got a little pace to him, doesn't he? He sure does. Got behind that Clemson back line quickly. Drew Kerr. Now a Sito. Who will hold a bit. Like you said, get a picture they want. Sent ahead. And a foul. No shame in trying to get on the ball right there by Smart. Whistle and it's going to be another cut it out by the official. Pretty obvious there. Yeah, certainly. Look at the athleticism of Smart there. Yeah, certainly a foul. Couldn't figure out what the gripe was, though, on the, the part of the Duke player there was he was holding the ball, so he wasn't trying to restart play quickly. If if he had put his hand on the ball and was showing that he was looking to restart and he felt like Smart wasn't giving him 10 yards, I could see the argument, but he was still holding the ball. It was a little odd exchange there. Periano. Last time, Duke got a free kick. They almost found the back of the net. This time, it's taken away and a foul. This will be whistled against the Blue Devils. And Lundegaard was able to get it out. Cameron Aceto whistled for the foul. And we're a little bit worse for the wear there. Pretty nice, though, when you get the center official to come all the way to the end line to help you up. Must have been a good effort, right? Tigers with a one goal lead against the Blue Devils. <laughs> Joseph Van Dema will send it downfield. Big leg. And that's headed out. Throw played to Periano. Jorgensen. Outside, Drew Kerr. And again, Duke going to be patient here with two minutes till the half. I wouldn't say Duke's necessarily sitting on the ball here, but you could tell they are being deliberate on purpose to make sure that they're the one that gets to dictate when the next chance comes. Oh, yeah, and that's always the thing, right? You're sure you can be your most vulnerable when you're in possession and your shape is big and you don't want to give too much away in those transitional moments, but they are, they are content to keep possession and try to build something here to close out the half. Some contact. Ibrahim tried to play it in. But that's okay. the problem there. Clemson can get forward so quickly in a matter of five to six passes, they can mount a counterattack. Ball gets through to the middle and taken away. What can Duke do with the chance? Not much. Ooh. Take it back. Look at Bean. There again. Bean deflected. Pop Mar boy got in the way of a potential goal. Yeah, and you can't underestimate how big of a block that was. Clemson was exposed. I think the the better play would have been the pass to slip the teammate in, but but Bean elects to shoot. Pop Mar boy comes up with a big block. And now andama has got about 30 seconds left. They're gonna again. You want to make sure that you're the one that gets the next chance if there is one. Twenty seconds till the half. 
Again, Clemson, if all things remain equal, you're going in with an advantage against a top 10 opponent. You got to be feeling pretty doggone good about the first 45 minutes. Yeah, I think that's fair. That's a handball. I think Cameron got away with one there. Across to no one. And we're at halftime. A solid 45 for the homestanding Tigers here. A 1 0 advantage. It's the last time that Duke lost a regular season match. 23 consecutive times, either win or draw. There's a look at the box score. Clemson, basically 23 months, in fact, 23 months to the day after they did that, they're looking to do it again. Well, it just feels like there's going to be fireworks anytime these two teams get together. And as you said, a physical first half with 11 fouls. I, I may be speaking out of turn here. I don't think that number is going down in the second half. <laughs> no, I think, that's, I think that's fair. I think these, these two coaches are two of the, the best in the business at making halftime adjustments. So we'll see. We'll see what transpires here for the second 45. Duquesne. I think Duke was, was happy with how they went into the half apart from not getting an equalizing goal. And I think Clemson was a little disappointed. Well, and it's always nice, you know, to, to know that both coaches really saw the same game that we did up here. Mike Noonan said, you know, 30 minutes, we're in control, last 15, maybe let up a little bit. And then John Kerr saying, we got to possess the ball. And they certainly started to do that at the end of the first half. Yeah, which is it's a little bit of a double-edged sword, you know. It's, it's what is the right way to to hurt teams or the wrong way. And and sometimes when you have the sustained periods of possession, it's it's nice because you feel like you're in control. But, but also in a lot of those moments, if the other team has 10, 11 players behind the ball, they're really, really hard to break down. Whereas if you can play on the break and counterattack teams quickly when they're exposed, you can really, really hurt them. Oof. Boy, that was a very aggressive try there by 17, Wayne Frederick. Yeah, he did well to pull his pull his foot out of there as Lundergaard went to head it. Tug of war over there. One on the throw by Clemson. Yeah. Olfer Bjornsson was making an argument for it. I like his style. If there's ever doubt, just claim it's yours. Throw there. Mine hard. Able to control it for the Tigers. Up ahead, Silla able to keep it at his foot. Beautiful feed for Smart. That's clever from Mosman Silla, wasn't it? And a whistle and a foul. Yeah, Lundergaard, <laughs> Bjornsson mixing it up there. Triggered quickly by Periano. Again, we told you before the half, Duke, so far this year, they've scored 15 goals. Only two of those goals have come before halftime. Definitely something to watch for Clemson, especially early. Duke tends to start fast in second halves. I'll be disappointed the, the quality of the cross wasn't better there. Duquesne was arguing the call for Clemson, and Duke elected to play quickly, got in behind. Just the quality of the delivery wasn't good enough. And Dama, the Ghanaian sophomore from Montverde. Duke throw in. Richmond couldn't quite get there. Yeah, Comrade Nacido did well. Masalas to throw. Ball finds nobody. 
Up ahead, here's Silla. Play it back, and maybe Clemson will try to keep possession for a while. Coach Kerr talked about it, putting a little pressure on that back line, not letting Clemson sit with it. And already you're seeing that pay dividends a little bit. Silla keeps it at his foot for a moment. It's well done for Mayor Daly. Battle and a foul on Smart. Good little shoving match there. Kenny Hot. And a yellow card has been issued to Nathan Richmond. He can't believe it. Nathan Richmond just jumping in front of the ball quickly there to, to prevent the quick restart from Duke. I really don't have a problem with that call. My only problem with that call is it's if people are going to call it, call it frequently, call it all the time. You don't see it always called, and sometimes it messes with the float of the game. So he was nowhere near the ball, but he quickly ran over and made a play on it. And Dama came off his line a little bit there, was able to track it down and sort of run interference, and we got a goal kick situation. Yeah, Joseph Van Dama just a little, making a little dummy play on it. Let's it run out for a goal kick. That's one thing I like. And Dama lives on the razor's edge a little bit. And he, he is not afraid to be aggressive in pursuing the ball. He's a, he's a field player that's just in a goalkeeper's uniform, isn't he? <laughs> you know, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, but some of you know some of that is the the modern game. The goalkeeper has to come out and and be clever with his feet, and and he's certainly not afraid to venture out of his area. You know, you'd rather have, and you can correct me if I'm wrong here. I, I feel like you'd rather have decisiveness from your goalkeeper, either in staying back or being aggressive as opposed to being in between and getting caught on the downside either way. Yeah, I think as long as you can make a decision and commit to it, I think that's the most important thing. And experience will you know, create those moments of, of the what is the right decision and the wrong decision. Well, I was going to say, as a coach, you know there is a right decision. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Just having conviction isn't quite enough right. sometimes. Lundegaard turns. Up ahead. One on one. Great sliding tackle. Cameron Asito there. Nicely done. A play on after that collision. This is Frederick in the middle. Taken away, maybe got a little too deep that time. Around the edge, can Smart get the corner? He can, look at that. Sean Smart. Ball played wide. Boy, what a spark plug Sean Smart has been tonight. Yeah, that was an outstanding run, and we'll see if the referee's gonna come back and have a little word with Bull Jorgensen there, a little shove in the back after Smart played the ball away. Richmond, left foot deflected. And that'll be a throw. It's great hustle to keep it from a corner. Duquesne. And an offside call. Everybody knew it was offside, and then he the referee called it. Your body language told you everything you need to know on that one. Yep. Yeah. 
Lopez Ford. Slid away by Boy. Are they going to come back with a foul call? I believe they are. Yeah, I think it was the foul on Frederick there. Referee again, just waiting for the advantage to play out. It did not. Clock stopped 35 38, and yeah, they're going to make the Blue Devils bring it back. Head referee Mike Stutt. They're going to make them go back. I'm going to say they tried to catch Clemson off guard. Daly tried to play it with Periano. And I'm not sure the field was ready for play. And yeah, I'm not really sure if that was a clock issue there or was he telling him to restart on his whistle? I put six seconds back on the clock, so you know, you're exactly right. Here's Periano. He's had a magic touch today. No foul. No foul. Here's Smart. Forward. Here's Silla. We'll let the defenders rush by and play it wide. Nice angle there for Silla to work. That's oh, a good ball. Jabe in. Lefty shot. No. Richmond finds a defender. That was a beautiful ball from Jabe. Jabe just changing the point of attack, I think. Nathan Richmond was surprised he had so much time. Smart. Weaves. Deflected. He has it back. And a foul called. It'll be a free kick for the Tigers. The nudge by Aceto draws a whistle. First foul of the second half for Duke. Uh, Comrade Aceto not happy with the call there, but really there's no use to foul in that situation. Have a look here. Sean Smart is going away from the goal towards the touchline. There's, there's, I think he's got a little bit of an argument. Sean, Sean Smart went down easy there. Yeah, second half, first four fouls whistled against Clemson. Again, Duke just whistled for its first. Now let's see what the tactic is for Mike Noonan and the Tigers here as Richmond and Silla come together. Sophomore and senior. Richmond, the left foot to the backside. Bjornsson can't clear it. Chance to cross. Big swing to no avail. Tigers continue to try to get something forward across and clear it again. Yeah, Pop Mar Boy is staying forward. Duquesne trying to turn it, and he can't. That's really good defending. Yeah, nicely done there. Was that hot, I believe? I think that was kind of hot. That's a foul. Yeah, they're going to get a foul. I really thought Duquesne, he was asking for it. I thought the ball was going to trickle out of bounds, but they do draw the whistle on Periano. Here's a look at that. It's just a, you see the, the hold a little bit. <clears throat> ball in the air. 
Silla's got it. Wide, and that'll be a goal kick. It was that Meinhardt on the far side. He was just trying to pick out. Well, I think we're having one of these momentum swings, like we talked about, Quark. It feels like Clemson's knocking on the door a little bit here. Luke Thomas in for Duke. Masalas will take a seat. Thomas on the left side. There's nobody around him right now. They want to go find him. I mean, he is wide open. There we go. And bring it over. Smart, though, closes ground so quickly. Thomas. Jabert. Able to do well with that. Again, Jaber gets a foot on it. This time it's Thomas on the wing. Plays it across. Hot. Big boot. Ooh. Off the bar. Rebound to Endema. Well, Kenny Hot has it go, and it actually looked like it was going high and wide, didn't it? But that ball just dropped. Caught the underside of the crossbar. I don't think they're going to have a look at that. I think it was fairly obvious that it didn't go over the the goal line, but what an opportunity there. That's really the best chance that Duke's had today to capitalize. Yeah, I think that and that that free kick moment they had in the first half, but yeah, certainly and Dima was was beaten on that one. Have a look here from better part of 25 yards. Look at it just dips. And then the follow up. I think that was the bear getting on the follow up. It's just hard to generate a lot of power on that header. And a Jago's rebound too. Right to the keeper and they are I believe they are going to look at this now. There's a look at. Forrester a Jago. I think they they made the from the video replay we saw I think they made the right decision in real time so it should be fairly quick. Of course you're looking for that whole ball to break the touch line you can see that ball is clearly out. I'll tell you another thing look how close and is to this thing hitting his leg and going in. Yeah. I mean if he's over six inches that ball hits the back of his leg and pops right in there. Yeah, I think he was just as surprised as we were that the ball dipped so much there at the, the last second and caught the underside of that crossbar. Yep, no goal. That's no goal. Same. That's what we expected. Just about at the 60 minute mark of this one, counting forward. And Clemson still with the 1 0 lead on the own goal. Back midway through the first half. In the 27th minute. Clemson once again in the attacking third. And Richmond falls down over the ball, gets right back up though and keeps possession. That's Chafamba. Now back to him. Up the left side. Meinhard gets it across. Again, good defending. Thomas with the fresh legs, able to get to the ball. That's nicely pressured from Nathan Richmond. Just forces that out for a Clemson throw. <laughs> so 
Smart gets it back. Out of bounds. Smart giving up some size over there to Aceto. Aceto 6-3. Smart listed at 5-8. Ball is in and deflected. That'll be a corner kick. I think Aceto thought that ball was out, but again, it's the, the whole ball has to break the plane of that in line. It does not. Smart sticks with the play and tries to ping another dangerous ball across the goal mouth. And once again, Kevin, it's the right side of the Clemson attack that's applying all the pressure to Duke. Yeah, between the combination of Nathan Richmond and Sean Smart over there, Chafamba is drifting over to create numerical superiority. Clemson's having a lot of joy on that right flank. Ball in. It's a good one. Oh, a miss hit. Can Duke capitalize? No. And that's going to be a foul. That's going to be on the Tigers. Yeah, they're going to play it back from the point of the contact. Yeah, it looked like it was Cameron Kerr and Alex Meinhardt just, just got tangled up. But now we'll have to have a look at the replay. I didn't think there was a whole lot in it. Just looked like two guys in a counterattack moment. But perhaps Meinhardt. And it's a little handsy there at the yeah, end, wasn't bit. it? It's a good call. Meinhardt picks up the yellow card as well. That's the second for Clemson. Richmond had it one earlier. Both in this half. Foul whistled against Clemson. I can look at the fouls. This has had the feel at times of a 1-0 game with 18 fouls, hasn't it? Yeah, you know, we call this doubleheader with the Clemson women and Florida State women before this, and that did not have the feel of a 1-0 game, did it? <laughs> no, not even for a moment. But it also didn't have 18 fouls. Right, I, I think whenever you near that 20 foul mark, and I like to say that game of soccer, game of football can can be part ballet, part bar fight. I think we're getting a little bit more of a bar fight here. Bjornsson. Oh, my. Oh, boy, a foul there and a quick restart for Thomas. And Bjornsson's fouled by Smart. You had Bjornsson upended on the one side, then back-to-back -back fouls whistled about Clemson, and now the crowd here letting them hear it. Yeah, that's happening right in front of that Duke bench, which is conveniently located right in front of that student section. They like to call it the orange wall here at Historic Rig Stadium. Free kick here for Duke. Blue Devils have been searching for the equalizer for 40 minutes. Taken out. I'll tell you, Wayne Frederick is exceptionally quick. He's been a little bit of a menace. He has been in the middle of a lot. Silla playing back just a little bit more here in the second half. Here he facilitates. Wide on the left, Duquesne. Up ahead. It's Richmond. Well, I think he thought he was offside and then was maybe not quite sure. That whistle came a little bit later. I think he's going to get a little warning there. Referee thinks he kicked the ball away, but yeah, you can see he's just a, about a yard offside when that ball is played in. And I'll tell you what, Duke's sideline's livid because Richmond's already wearing a yellow card tonight. I'm sure they wanted that to be number two. Yep. I mean, that's a, that's a game changer, right? That's a now you got to see this game out with 25 minutes left, a man down. Thomas 
to the back line and a foul. And that's a yellow card for Jaber. Mike Noonan's upset. Everybody's a little on edge right now. In case you didn't notice, it feels like a Clemson Duke game now, Paul, <laughs> right? We expected little, nothing different from this. They're getting a little amped up in here. Seemed like a fair call. Right there, Jaber a little sloppy on that challenge. Well, it does feel a little bit like it's a, a powder keg, and it's just going to take one moment that's going to be the, the match that lights it. This could be it for Duke with Frederick on the wing. Cross, and Dama. That's a good punch from Andama. I think that's a good matchup, though, right? I think it's the two quickest player on the players on the field, and Sean Smart and Wayne Frederick. Here comes Richmond into the middle. Tassila, he left it behind, but gets it again. Can he and Richmond combine? Richmond playing with six defenders around him. Smart deflected and a corner kick coming for Clemson. And again, it's Smart. Bodies on the ground and a stoppage for a substitution or two. I'm not sure why he's stopping the clock there. I don't know if he's checking on Frederick or. Is this going to be a card? Yep. Yep. Yellow card for Frederick. We'll have to have a look at that and see what that was. High intensity few minutes. First yellow card issued to Duke. Substitutions on the pitch. We'll get the corner. This is corner number five for Clemson tonight. Contact with the keeper. A strong punch from Mystone there. Whenever there's any any contact, any shielding and setting of picks, and the goalkeeper's involved, I think the inclination is to rule in the goalkeeper's favor. Nice run there from the back. Hot in the middle, out to Thomas. Thomas tracked down. Jaber got a, bo a boot on it. That's really well done from Clemson, just breaking pressure, make it look easy. Six, seven, eight passes and and now they find themselves in the final third. Long run for the Tigers. Knocked away from Duquesne, and it will be a throw. Very close to the corner. Duquesne's been very active on that left wing, especially here in the second half. turn and a goal kick that's just well defended by the Blue Devils yeah Meinhardt with a good turn there but as you said the, enough contact but there's no foul there Enrique Montana the third in for Duquesne by the way Tyler Trimnell also in for Richmond and Bean has returned for a Jago. That happened the last stoppage a moment ago.
once again deflected. I'll tell you what, both teams have really had a hard time just piecing anything together without resistance. That's taken away by Silla. Three on three. Moves it into the middle. Shot. Scooped up. Eye stone. Johnny on the spot, the young freshman. Yeah, I think it's going to take something pretty special to beat Eye Stone from distance. That's what I would call kind of a half chance right there. Thomas tried to play it through and it made its way to Andema. Interesting to see how both coaches view this last 20 minutes. Do we see subs or do we see them ride out the Jimmys and Joes that got them to this point? Yeah, I would think for Clemson, I, I think he's been so effective and so dangerous. Certainly Nathan Richmond's night can't be done for Clemson, right? And I think you'll have to see the bear come back on for for Duke. One at the table for the Tigers already. The next dead ball. You can see him far side of your screen. Thomas's ball in for Frederick. Thought Bjornsson may have had a chance. It's back to Frederick. He whiffs. This is Bean. What a worker tonight. Silla tried to turn it. And now an opportunity. Up ahead. This is smart. Collision in the box. A play on, says the referee. He sees no contact there. And I think that was a Cito on the challenge. Lovely ball played in. That's just shoulder to shoulder, but it's an unpredictable game. You don't know what the referee is going to see in it. Mike Noonan's asking for them to look at it. Smart is down. That was very, I will say this, if there's no call there, then you have no choice but to say that's very well defended by Aceto. Yeah. yeah. And I think the only thing that they can really look at in a situation like that is if they do call the foul, it's a, a spot check. Is it outside the area? Is it a free kick or is it inside the area? Jackson Robel is in for Silla. He'll take a breather. Much like Richmond, you can't imagine he's out forever. Right. <laughs> Deflected. And a tie up there. Oh, wow. Between Periano. And that's Robel right in the game. Mixing it up. Yeah, just a little, just a little <laughs> bit with the hands. Yeah, a little takedown. No big deal. Just missed the foot there. That was Robel. Again, right in the middle of the action. You want your reserves to be able to do that. Jackson's been active for the last few minutes. Smart with positioning draws a foul. Uh, Sean Smart's just so quick. It's going to be hard to to look at him and beat him in pace. John Kerr can't believe it. And he's looking for an obstruction call. He feels like Sean Smart jumped in front of the player. And the biggest thing in a situation like that is the ball within playing distance in the eyes of the referee. He thought it was. It's a no call. Up ahead. Bjornsson has it. Backside, the dangerous bean in the box, a flick. Clemson deals with it. The redirect. Here comes the team in orange. Up the left side. 
Meinhard hits the brakes. Back to the left, deflected. Good defending. <laughs> Wow. And then a corner kick. It looked like Daly just kind of stumbled over the ball there. Unfortunate after some fantastic one-on-one -on -one defending, and he knows that's just an unfortunate error there. It looked like Meinhardt. He spins him around a little bit. There's contact. Was there a little no? I don't know. I'm not sure if there was a nudge there or not. Boys. I don't know, he stopped the clock. He, he feels that Clemson's wasting time. It seems a bit early to be wasting time, and I think that's Coach Noonan's argument, but he stopped the clock on this restart. And into the back! I think that was Tyler Trimble that got on the end of that. So many chances, five corner kicks. For Clemson so far, and they finally cash one in. Not a lot of seats available here, and they're all standing now with a 2 0 lead. Looked like Tyler Trimnell was able to, to get in front of his defender and drive to that near post, and he just puts it in the. Is it the bottom corner there? So tough, just heads it down. I Stone can't get to it. A lot of power generated behind that header. That's a nice goal. Beautiful ball in for Robel, too. Perfect positioning. And just sneaking it past the keeper. Well, that's, a, that's a massive goal. Now I think Duke has a decision. A little bit of risk reward here. Last 16 minutes. How can you affect change on this game with either personnel changes or changing your shape? Tyler Trimnell's first goal of the year. Native of Lancaster, South Carolina. Can Duke respond here? They need to in a hurry. Masalis gets it forward for Bean. Cleared away. Make no mistake, Duke has had some chances here, but the highest quality chances have come from Clemson for the most part. I think Duke rung the one off the, the crossbar, and they had the moment in the first half on the set piece. Coach Noonan at halftime referenced he felt like they could have been two goals to the good, and I think he was talking about Shafamba's early chance. But... Uh, Duke has their own opportunity to set piece here as they are in the corner. Well, you know, the Blue Devils would love to have the one back right at the mouth of the goal, just couldn't find a way to cash it in. And like you said, you know, kind of like that set piece there for Clemson, Dukes was very similar on the free kick. Got the ball to a head, just couldn't sneak it past. Yeah, for sure. Cleared well, I believe that was Meinhard. Took a big swing at it. Lopez looking to move it right, does so. Up the field, nice job, overhead. This is Bull Jorgensen. Jorgensen with some good footwork. Yeah, Gets it back out high for Masales. Left foot, it's deflected. I think that's the second or third block shot from a Clemson player. But you love that collective defending attitude from your team. You know, what, what a selfless act. You know, you got Clemson players with cramps and you got Duke players going, let me help you with that. <laughs> there you go. And you could tell that is that does not feel good. That's Adam Lundegaard. He's trying to work off a 
It's like a hamstring cramp or something. He's going to stay in the game. That's a tough thing. You know, it's it's always these early September, late August. It doesn't feel like it's too hot, but with the humidity, you're using a lot of water. You've just got to start getting hydrated the day before this match. Balls down and controlled by Chafamba. Clemson with bodies forward. They're not done. Smart. Taken away on the slide. Jackson down there. That's a good tackle. Nice counterattack, though, from Clemson. I mean, that's what you're looking for when those moments you can break out. You want forward runs, unselfish forward runs, passes looking to go forward. I'll tell you what, in terms of a tone setter today, sometimes you can have it be a physical presence. I think Smart with his speed has been the catalyst for Clemson today in every aspect. Yeah, and for me, this year is perhaps so far their, their most improved player from last year. He's just, uh, he's been pretty electric when he's when he comes on. And that type of work rate and attitude you see from him, it really is infectious, right, for his teammates. And I think he's going to be probably just about done. I don't know how much he's got left in the gas tank, but it looks like Titus Sandy's going to be coming on for him. If Sandy's in for him, you've got Easley coming in as well for Meinhard. Lopez coming off for the Blue Devils. And the shot, by the way, from Periano that looked threatening for a bit. Spun wide. Crew Verratti's out for Duke. And I believe Ajago is back for Lopez. Speaking of catalyst, Bean has been that for Duke. Came off the bench. I know he's been frustrated, hasn't been able to connect on anything in the attacking third, but he's put his teammates in position. Here's Periano. Nick from behind and a foul. Whistled against Easley. And this may be another yellow. One of the guards upset about it. Now that's not going to be able to stop it. That pushes our foul count to 25. Yeah, 16 fouls for Clemson. They've got 10 in the second half alone. It's a great opportunity here for Duke. Again, a set piece. I think Periano is asking to come off here. Qualk, he looks like he's he's tweaked something. He's going down, I think, before this restart. And you know, this is, if this happens, the man who's at the table is Drew Curry. He's, they're gonna go ahead and let him sub. And I'm not saying this is why, I'm just telling you the benefit. Drew Kerr is six feet tall and Periano's 5'7". There you go. I don't know if Again, I'm not suggesting anything, I'm just telling you the benefit. I don't know if he's he's tweaked his hamstring or his groin or perhaps he's just cramping, but he looked a, a little in distress there as he was coming off. Twenty three Robel comes out. Obviously his contribution immense in this game gets the assist. Low cross headed away. Jackson a chance with the left foot right to Andema. Ajato let that let that go. Like you may have thought about having a last touch but I think he was in an offside position. Silla, by the way, back on for Clemson for the final few minutes. 
turn by Enrique Montana. And now a chance for Silla to get loose for a moment. Can Clemson create a chance here? Yeah, just the pushing overlap. forward. Titus Sandy. Plays it back for Chifamba and then all the way back. Silla. Oh, it's over everybody's head. We get a whistle. I'm just going to call an offsides there. I don't know if that was easily or perhaps Silla saying he, Silla came back from an offside position. That's a Frederick to try to win that that aerial challenge against Pop Marboy. Such a physical presence. Ajago back to Frederick. This is Daly. Bull Jorgensen. I kept in bounds and headed away. Pretty good angle for Ajago there. I did well to put that back across, but I think was that Gibert who read it well? I believe it was Gibert. Throw from Jackson. Trying to flick it back. Instead, it'll move Clemson's direction. Frederick a little too heavy for a couple of teammates, Bjornsson and Jorgensen. And a goal kick coming. Referee just going to have a little word there. Just think a little. Uh, and they're going to keep Clemson from wasting time. They're going to run the clock. It's a little frustration on the part of Bjornsson, I think. Understandable. And Dama going to give his teammates ample time to get situated. Big boot there. And it just pumps that ball forward. Throw in to boot. Two subs. This will be mine hard back along with Richmond, as we suspected. They'll replace. Well, and you have to say, Tyler Trimble came in and did his job. He sure he? did. A little bit of an insurance goal there. He looks like he's had a little hitch in his giddy up on the way off. Easily also out. Goal kick off the deflection. Once again, Amir Daly in good defensive position. Yeah, Meinhardt looking for a foul there. He's not going to get it. Frederick keeps it in. And a goal kick. This redounds to Clemson's benefit here. Another sub as Smart's going to return. Smart comes in for Titus Sandy. Good few minutes from him. Yeah, just give Smart a little breather there, and that's a good tactical substitution in terms of managing the, the clock there from Coach Noonan. Of course, the leading team in college soccer, if they make a sub within that five minute window from the end of the game clock's going to stop so he's quick to get that in and just chew a little bit more time off that clock now it's about just seeing this game out find your moments do you want to get in the corner and try to kill the clock take your time on every restart
down the line. And it goes out of bounds, trying to draw the contact there. I have a feeling a penalty is the last thing this referee is interested in. Oh, yeah. Tonight. No question, especially at this point in the game. Silla tried his best, though. Smart to Chifamba. Oh, an errant touch. Yeah, that was a lovely idea. Meinhardt was just looking to set Silla in and, and run in behind. Ball just got away from him a bit. Duke trying to get connected in the final third. A chance, Frederick and Dema. He has dealt with everything brilliantly tonight. Jago just let that one rip and thinking Dema made the right decision. Just try to knock that ball down and take the sting out of it. That's a. A little uncalled for, but Sean Smart, I think, made a meal of it, too. <laughs> Again, I think the referee's over it. He's not interested. <laughs> He's thinking to himself, can this four and a half minutes can't can't run quick enough for him. Now he finally stopped the clock with 417. And Mike Noonan's upset. A little join between the sidelines, I think. Duke staff was begging for a stoppage. Again, we stopped the clock. Looks like Meinhardt's gone down. And Meinhardt, he may have worn that one. Looks like he's going to be replaced. Now, they were going to put Trimble back in. This clock operators getting a workout tonight. I know. The second half. They did their thumb exercises. Yeah. It's been choppy. Jackson. Now oh, Popmar. Boy has done well with Ajago, but sure has. Ajago is going to be a force in this league this year, isn't he? Oh man. It's just a handful to deal with his, his physicality. He's relentless. Kerr got the deepest there for Duke. After Thomas sent it forward. Smart. Through to the wing. This is Richmond. Double team keeps it. Richmond across and between ideas. But Clemson gets to keep it. And falls, falls nicely for Enrique Montana. To the left of the box. Boy, really thought there'd be a cross opportunity there for Jabe. Just couldn't get the angle. No call there on contact. Got to be something here, and a foul whistled. Well, that's an interesting one, isn't it? Meinhardt's making a play on it. Ice Stone comes through it. Have a look here. Oof. I think he could have justified it there, Kevin. Yeah, I think he could have, but like I said, I think Perhaps more than Coach Noonan, the referee is the only one here in this stadium that's ready for this game to be over. Our foul count is now up to 28. I believe it. Smart on the wing. Can Clemson cap it? Will they even try or will they waste time? It's like Chafamba is just going to try to run out the string here and a throw in. That's like it's going to be a throw. Yep. Less than 90 seconds. This will go down as Duke's first loss in the regular season in 24 matches, dating back exactly 23 months to a visit Clemson paid them in Durham. And I think for this Clemson team, 
Sometimes you look back on a game by game and see see where your season turned and a top 10 win at home over one of your your biggest rivals is could be huge for the confidence of this Clemson side. You know, you talk to people around this program too. A lot of folks circled the USF win on the road as a potential turning point. And this is a Clemson team too. They've got four of their next five matches right here at historic Riggs Field to continue to kind of build those good vibes. Maybe one more effort for the Blue Devils. And I think the icing on the cake is if you're Clemson, you want to get the shut out here. You don't want to concede something here in the last 15 seconds. And Dama lets it go high. And that's going to do it. That'll do it. Huge win for Mike Noonan and the Clemson Tigers. As they knock off number eight Duke here at home. They got off the.